and if the referral is required or not. For this, there are, uh, please note down this chart. There are certain standard things. That means the height and weight are predictable at certain stages. The child from the birth to seven years of age usually increases in height at a constant rate, which is 2.5 times. If the child from birth to two years will increase in weight by double the time of the height, that is by 4.5 times. And from two to 10 years of age, again the weight increase reduction uh, increases. Uh, at a lower pace, but it is still predictable and on an average, the weight increases by 5 LB per year. Thus, we can note the height and weight of the child, compare it with the standard growth curve, have an idea whether the child is normal or not, requires any referral or not. Moving on to the next question. Electrical and thermal stimulations are the most common methods of assessing vitality. Young children are not the good candidates for vitality testing as false positive responses are common in primary condition. Yes, we'll go it sentence by sentence. The first sentence is saying electrical and thermal stimulations are the most common methods. Yes, though many advances have come, these are still the two most commonly followed methods to check the vitality of the teeth. Electrical method is using electrical pulse tester, whereas thermal stimulation is using the uh, hot test and cold test. Hot test, any hot ball burnisher, hot gutta burnisher can be used, whereas in the cold ethyl chloride spray, cold ice, pencil ice, all these are used. Again, these all are the subjective tests. They definitely depend upon the patient's cooperation. And as we all know, young children are already anxious. Their responses are not normal. Hence, the more upcoming tests like laser Doppler flowmetry and pulse oximetry are going to be more standard tests in the future because they do not rely on the subjective response. Their responses are objective. Also, they might reduce the anxiety of the child. So, but right now, at this point of time, electrical and thermal are still the most commonly used methods used for assessing the vitality. Moving on next. Now, <clears throat> the first evidence of calcification of primary teeth begins approximately as. Now, before moving on this, there is a one chart which I... Okay, before moving on to the next question, I will uh, require the students to please give me a feedback whether the speed is correct or have any doubts in the first four questions. Okay, so moving on to the next question. The first evidence of calcification of primary teeth begins approximately at. Well, <clears throat> out of all the available options, every option, we should know a normal uh, 
developmental stages of the teeth. Well, before proceeding with it, we, I would like to make you people know the next chart. The give the this chart gives a complete detail of all the developmental stages of the teeth. So that is when the conception occurs. Then is the first time the tooth development begins. That is by the time of one and a half month, six weeks, six weeks of the embryo and the sixth week of the embryonic life, the dental lamina marks its first formation. Then the first my, macroscopic indication, that is the indication which says yes, the morphologic development has started, takes place by around 11 weeks, which is around the, uh, by the end of the third month of the intrauterine life. Right? First, now mental lamina formation has begun, the tooth development has started, but the primary teeth, the primary teeth first evidence of calcification they start by <clears throat> okay, the first evidence of calcification of primary teeth. The first evidence starts by the end, by the start of the fourth month. That is, the entire intrauterine life which is divided into three trimesters. The first three months is the first trimester. The next three, that is, by the uh, sixth month.